Hello everyone, Marin here for Learn Fun. Today we are going to make this lovely Mother's Day Give It A Whirl slimline card. I had so much fun making the pirate scene I shared a couple of weeks ago, and I thought it would be fun to use the same design but with different critters. And you are not going to believe this. In addition to the Give It A Whirl I set, I only used two stem sets to make this card. Kangarific and it's a done. I am pointing this out because it never happens. So just like my parrot scene, I started off by cutting a slimline Bristol smooth panel and I placed a few images just to have a general idea of the scene. I want to have different sections on my landscape. So I am making some pencil marks on the side to remember those parts. From the bottom to the top, we will have a grass border, next some hills and mountains, and then the sky. So I am starting off with the grass border at the bottom. I placed my panel on my sticky mat with the slimline grassy stencil on top, and I am going to use shabby shutters and modern oxidings to make this grass border. Now let's do the sandy hills. The slimline grassy stencil is protecting the grass border and I taped a slimline hillside stencil above it and I am using anti-cleanern and vintage photo sidings to make this sand border. Now let's move on to the mountains. I placed the slimline hillside stencil on the lower part of my panel to protect my work. And I am going to create some mountains using the mountain stencil along with vintage photo and ground espresso oxidings. We are going to have a separation in the middle of the panel, but it will be covered by the Give It A World panel, so that's totally fine. And the last element to finish our landscape, the sky, that I am going to color using tumble glass and broken china oxidings. So now texture, you know that I never leave a distress ink or an oxide ink background without adding more details. So that's what I am going to do for each section of my panel.
Now let's color some images. As always, I stamp them all on some 80 pound Nina Solar White Card stock using jet black ink. I cut them using the matching dies and I am going to use my alcohol markers to color everything. This video is going to be quite long, so I am only coloring the kangaroo mom and one of the trees, but I will color more images later in the video. So before creating the interactive feature, we are going to stick the images that go on each side of our slimline panel. And to make sure that I don't stick images on the give it a whirl spot, I cut an extra circle out of scrap paper. And I am going to stick it where the final give it a whirl panel will go. I am going to place all the images on my panel, just like so and I will attach them off screen using 1mm and 2mm foam squares. Now let's work on our Give It A Whirl front panel. I cut a Bristol smooth piece of paper. I am temporarily taping the template to it and placing it in my Misty tool with some stamps on top. We want this panel to be as flat as possible so nothing comes blocking the mechanism. So I am going to do some masking I am first going to pick up the grass and the butterflies with the door of my Missy tool and I am going to stamp them using jet black ink. I want to have some rocks and flowers behind the grass so I am going to mask those images. I use the matching dies to cut the masks out of post-it notes. And to place the masks properly, I am using the lights above my desk to see through the paper. And this way, make sure that the masks are centered on the images. I also masked the butterflies. 
placed the rocks and flowers and I am going to stamp them using gel black ink again. I masked the rocks and the flowers and placed a lizard on top of the rock and I don't know it yet but at that very moment I made a mistake but we will see it very soon. So I stamped the lizard and masked it, same with the sign. I am also going to mark each corner of the template. This will help me to put it back in place later. And now I am going to use the same stencils and the same oxidings as before to create my landscape behind my images. So, the moment of truth, the background is done, so I am going to remove all the masks. I am super confident and eager to see the result. And right there, I am realizing I should have stamped and masked the lizard before the rocks. And it's a good thing you can hear me on the footage because I said pretty bad words to me and to the whole entire world. Well, it's not that shocking and maybe I could have made it work, but I know me and I also know that my eyes would have been drawn to it every time I would have looked at it. So I remade it. It took some extra time, but I was much more happy this way. And I also created the landscape for the inside panel using the same stencils and inks as before. And I also did the outside edges using the inside circle template, along with the lost shadow and hickory smoke oxidings. So now I am going to color this cute little scene using my alcohol markers again. Now let's add a greeting to this front circle. First, I am treating my paper with powder to make sure that the embossing powder sticks to the ink only. Next, I am stamping my greeting with clear embossing ink. 
I am pouring some white embossing powder on top and I am going to heat set the powder using my heat gun. I added more details here and there, a kangaroo silhouette on the sign, stitched lines behind the butterflies and white details, and now I am going to cut my front circle. So I put the template back in place using the four pencil marks I did before on each corner. I tucked the moving circle die inside the template with the cutting slot at about 2 o'clock. I am removing the template and adding a couple of washi tape pieces to keep everything in place. And then a run through my die cutting machine to cut our front panel. Now let's work on the inside panel. I am going to stamp and emboss a second greeting at the top of the circle and I want it to follow the curve of that circle so I am placing the stamp horizontally straight and I am going to bend it on each side trying to make it follow the curve as nicely as possible. I am going to add some powder to the paper I am stamping my greeting with clear embossing ink. Next, I am pouring white embossing powder on top of the ink. And then I can melt and heat set the powder using my heat tool. So now I am going to stick the kangaroo mom, the baby and the butterflies using liquid glue to once again keep everything as flat as possible. I am also going to place the other images, but I'm not gluing them yet. And next, I am going to cut this panel using the largest circle die. And to make sure it's lined up with the front panel, I am first going to place that front panel on top. And I am going to place the circle die on top with the cutting slot tucked in the slot on the front panel, just like that. I am using washi tape to keep the die in place and I am removing the front panel. And then I can send my panel to my die cutting machine. And this is what we get. It's perfect. End of screen, I am going to add the remaining images using liquid glue. And now we can assemble our Give It A Whirl interactive panel. I cut the tab out of some heavy cardstock and the connector piece out of copy paper. And first, I am going to keep the front panel and connector piece. I am folding this connector piece right on the score line. I am using my bone folder to get a nice fold. And I am going to add liquid glue to one half of this connector piece, just like that. I am going to flip my front circle over. And I am going to attach the connector piece right up against the slot. I am pressing firmly to make sure it's very well attached. And now I am going to add liquid glue on the other half of the connector piece. Off screen, I cut another front circle out of scrap paper. And I am going to stick both circles back to back, making sure to line up the slots just like that. Now with the tab, I am going to add liquid glue on this section. And I am going to put it right there between the two moving circles, making sure that the curve on the tab lines up with the circle. To decorate the tab, I cut the handle out of tight pull cardstock and the arrow out of yellow cardstock. I am sticking both pieces on the tab. 
And now we are ready to assemble the circles. I am flipping them both over and I am going to feed the tab on the small circle through the slot on the large circle, just like so. And then we just need to guide the paper, help it find its way. And I always like to play with the mechanism several times to make sure it works properly. So now we just need to add foam strips at the back of the circle following the stitch line. I am adding two layers of foam strips to make sure that my Give It A World panel will be raised next to the images on both sides of the seam. And that's it, all done. We have a new super cute and busy scene. I hope that you like it. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Have a very nice day and I will see you on the next one. Bye.